Hello everyone and welcome to The Little Quilter. Today we are going to be getting the armadillo quilt onto the quilting frame, but first I have got to piece the back. So the backing fabric is a flannel fabric that I have um, and it is not wide enough. So as usual with a lot of quilts, unless you get the 108 inch wide fabric, a lot of times you're gonna have to piece the back of it. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things that I'm I'm making note to do whenever I'm doing this, okay? And the biggest thing is whenever I load my quilt on the frame, I wanna think about what way I want to quilt my design. And that may change whether I do the quilt, you know, this way or turning it and doing it, you know, horizontally, okay? And that is going to decide how I'm going to piece my back but I'm going to show you guys today how I'm going to do that and then we're also gonna get started quilting. So let's get it done. Okay, so we've got our fabric and let me find the pin so I don't poke myself here, but I've got my fabric. I'm gonna go ahead and sew this seam down the center, quarter inch line, but I am gonna go a little bit further cause I've got my, uh, edges here so I don't want to include these little dit dots in it so I'm gonna go just a quarter a quarter inch next to that or right next to it and um yeah All right, let's see how we did here. So I did hand cut this, so there is a little bit that overlaps, but I'm really not worried about that. I knew there was going to be, and I have plenty of extra. So whenever I'm laying that out, as I've probably already said, I do wanna make sure that I have a nice gap all around the quilt edges, just so that I have room to hold that quilt backing while I'm quilting on top, okay? Um, but let's see how this, Let's see how this looked. So, if we flip it over, well, it's not too shabby, is it? Actually, the lines lined up pretty nicely. I was hoping that they would, but I didn't know that they actually, I was, I was hoping they would, since I had done it on either side and lined them up. So, but that worked out really, really nicely. And, um, you know, now it should help it to look a little more uh, seamless once we get it all quilted as well as um, it shouldn't be, you know, when you have a flannel like this, if you had half of the quilt that was like, you know, a little bit up, right? If you had half of the quilt that was up here, there would be that just distraction between. So I'm really happy how that turned out. I'm gonna go ahead and iron these seams open. I like to iron the seams open and, uh, that way they sit a little bit flatter as well and you don't have like a bunch somewhere in there. Again, this is a good reason if you are quilting this that you want it to go perpendicular rather than sideways because again, you're gonna have that. What I mean by that is if it is going this way, the quilt is being pulled forward and backward, which is not pulling on that seam. Once I put it on the loom, if I put it this way, it's pulling at that seam, which you just run the risk of having an issue there. And there's no reason to, to do that if you don't have to. So just a little bit of forethought when you're going, well, how do I do my backing? Well, what do I have to do if I need to piece it? Those are thoughts. And that's gonna go back to also, how are you gonna design the quilt? So I already have a design in mind for the armadillo quilt, and I can't wait to share it with you guys. So I'm gonna iron this and we're gonna keep going. Okay, everybody so I have got 
the backing onto the quilt frame. And if you guys are going, I don't know how to do that, then check out one of my other videos with the Barnstar quilt where I showed how in detail I put on the backing. But just going over a little bit of putting it on and then I am now ready to go ahead and get my quilt top on there. Now you may have noticed I have been spraying. I'm spraying because I don't iron my backs and I'm not going to iron this. Now I have ironed all of the seams so that they sit nicely but I'm not going to iron the entire quilt top. Um, I will do a little mister of water to help kind of add some moisture to that area and then as we roll it up it will help it to lay flat and as we progress through the quilt the the tension that is there will help to eliminate some of or eliminate those wrinkles. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and jump into putting this on. Again as I talked about I'm actually going to be loading this quilt uh, long ways rather than up and down which I a lot of you are going to wonder why we're doing that, but you will see once we actually go through how I'm designing this quilt and how I'm going to be doing the quilting. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into that. Here we go. Okay, everybody, it is on the quilting frame. Look at it. There they are, the little armadillos. So finally got it on the quilting frame. A uh, couple things that we're gonna talk about here are the batting that I am using is heirloom cotton batting. I think it also has some polyester. It's a blend batting. Um, it's actually supposed to be fusible, but I'm obviously not gonna use it as a fusible batting. Uh, the, main reason I didn't want to use what I normally use, this right here, which is Quilters Deluxe Poly, is I have found that the quilts that I have done with it look beautiful, love them, but they're very heavy. Now, even the smaller quilts that I've done, which I know I've only done three quilts, but of those, one was a smaller one, and it's still a very stiff quilt. Now, I haven't washed any of them, so maybe that would change things, but I wanted to try a different one quilting. I have used this batting before in some of my other quilts and have found it to be very soft. The reason I'm doing that is because I want this quilt is going to go to a mom and a baby, and so I don't want a really stiff quilt for them. I want something very soft. I've got flannel on the underneath. I want it to be very soft. So I've got my quilt loaded. The, the thread that I'm gonna use, let me grab that. Okay, so I got the thread. So in the last quilts that I have done, I have done superior thread on my top line um, and I have done bottom line in my bobbin. This time around, I'm gonna switch things up. I wanted to try something different. I wanted to try something to see if it would help me with tension. And so I'm going to use some pre-wound bobbins and I'm going to use a glide thread. So it's a new thread for me. I've never used glide. I'm kind of excited about it. It gives a little bit of sheen, supposedly. So we'll see on that end. But I've got glide and I think I'm gonna use the lighter color. So let me show you. Okay, so these are the two threads that I have. This is number 10649 Seagull and it is a lighter thread. And then I've got the corresponding light gray Magna Glide bobbins. And then this one is a little bit darker and it is number 17543 light gray. Um, and it's got these darker lead gray Magna Glide bobbins. And so looking at this quilt, just because there's so much light background, I'm going to go with this lighter thread because I have so much more light fabric that it'll just blend in. I think it'll still look nice on some of the darker thread, darker fabrics, but I think if I put this darker thread on here, it's just gonna show up too much for me. So that's the thread that I'm gonna be using here is the seagull and the light gray on the bobbin, which will go very well, I think, 
with the gray, well, you guys have seen it with the, it, it will go very well with the gray backing fabric. So we're gonna load all of that up and then I'm going to get into marking my registration line and we're gonna start quilting this, this puppy. Let's do it. Okay, everyone, I have started quilting. Very exciting. I am, like I talked about, using the glide thread and let me flip it around so that I can show you guys that. But it is going really well. And actually, um, so I typically use my Toa Bobbin gauge to set my tension on my bottom line thread. And with the magnetic MagnaGlide bobbins that are pre-wound, you can't use that. I guess it catches on it. So you don't use the bobbin gauge, the Toa Bobbin gauge to do it. So all I did was take it and sort of dropped it like this. Let me see. There we go. So I dropped it like this as a, while it was in the bobbin. And um, if it went smoothly, that's supposed to tell you that it's good to go based on the research that I did. And it seemed smooth to me. So I went ahead and set it in, did some tests, had to tighten up the top line a little bit, and then it was good to go. Also, I did not pull out, I saw on the Handy Quilter website, they did not recommend pulling out the little backstop that is in the back of the bobbins. So I have done all of this thus far with that backstop still in there, and I really haven't had any issues. And so since you can damage those pulling them in and out, I don't think I'm going to use them. But so what we're going to do now is I'm going to do the border or at least the side border of the fabric. I will put up a video of the background border that I did on my iPad and I hope that you guys enjoy this and here we go. Okay, so originally I'd planned to do vertical stripes and then follow those with perpendicular stripes. But as I got into the perpendicular ones, I just, I don't really love the look as much as I did on the iPad. So I'm going to go ahead and unpick all of this and I'm gonna do just the vertical stripes down the entire thing. I think it'll help pull it all together. Um, and I won't end up with this concern of like, okay, now I've got to backtrack all the way up this and you know, that's just like a lot of double stitching, which I don't think looks as good. So I'm going to unpick all of this and then start over doing the vertical stripes and we'll go from there.
All right, everyone, I have finished this border and I am really happy with how it turned out. I did kind of change and I'll show you guys right now while I'm talking about it. At the very beginning, they were a little bit more looped, almost like a feather. And after that first one, I thought, you know what? I think they really need to be more pointed, almost like a plant. And so the rest of them, I went through and did the more pointed version of them. And I really like it. No, I'm not going to unpick the first one. It's fine. It will blend in with everything else that will be going on in the quilt. I don't think it'll be a big deal, but I'm really excited to finally be back on the long arm machine and working on it. So I feel like it's been forever, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I cannot wait to share more videos with you guys of me quilting this. I've got the other borders to do as well as the background and then the armadillos themselves. So I hope that you guys will stay tuned and we'll see you next time. Have a great day. Thanks.